This week on Last Week in China, Extreme Entertainment, Sina Weibo's Big Game Mistake, and Pimping Up with Some Panda Plush. Whilst all across America and Europe, the craze for 10 to 50,000 calorie binges continues, in China, binges of other kinds are trending on social media. Quite what the appeal of these ice-eating frenzies is, is not quite clear. Icy objects of all shapes and colors are popped into one's mouth and chewed for the viewer's pleasure. And chewed. And chewed. Whatever the appeal, it seems that viewers agree, with many comments equating to the English vernacular of WTF. Taking things one step further, this particular young man seems to have a penchant for eggs. Incidentally, this is the Chinese sign for six, which is pronounced as liu, which also sounds like niu, which means awesome, or badass, which is exactly the result of too much protein. Thankfully, such flagrant gluttony will not be so easily accessible by China's young minds of tomorrow. As of last week, China's youth will have to go through mom and pop to get access to the more extremes of China's social media. Last Friday, office loafers were thrown into a frenzy nationwide as video site apps suddenly went down as under maintenance, only to re-emerge later with parental controls. Some other apps, such as Nehan Duanza, have been shut down entirely for failing to control what is classified as illegal content. What will continue to be shown, however, is content originating from China's LGBT community. Having last week announced a campaign to remove all violent, pornographic and gay content, Weibo parent company Sina received a massive online backlash. Naturally, China's online community objected to what could at best be called a clumsy lumping of genres. Even China's mainstream newspaper, The People's Daily, published a statement of its disdain online. Intellectually speaking, there should be a consensus around respecting other people's sexual orientation, the column said, adding that comparing homosexuality to pornography and violence and regarding it as abnormal would go down badly with the public. Their Weibo account then published an article with this quote from one of China's contemporary sex education pamphlets. There is not simply one kind of sexuality. Homosexuality and bisexuality are not diseases. Eliminating prejudice and understanding differences should be a shared belief of society. Last Sunday, Sina, having finally realized their whoopsie, refined or retracted their statement to say, this cleanup of content would no longer target gay content and that it would primarily focus on pornographic and violent material. Adding, thank you everyone for your discussions and suggestions. You can't say fairer than that. In other news this week, the Boston Marathon received a surprise winner in the form of Japan's Yuki Kawauchi. The surprise lay in the fact that, whereas his competitors prepare for perhaps two marathons a year, he runs every day before starting his full-time job as a school clerk, as well as participating in 40 marathons per year. It's left the marathon community scratching their heads in bewilderment. Perhaps one of the keys to his success was the warm-up half marathon he did in full panda costume, which leads us to the question, is there anything the power of the panda can't achieve? It seems not, and the crow community agree. Forget fox, forget mink. If you're a crow, this season's fashion for pimping your pad is panda fur. <laughs> That's all for this week on Last Week in China. I'm David Musket, thanks for watching, and we leave you with this nostalgic feeling. Thank you.